Even though Lord's family aren't musical, her beginning starts with music. Lord recalls her earliest memory being her dad singing her to sleep with Stairway to Heaven. Her childhood was one her parents were determined to make full of love, care and warmth, in contrast to their own. Ella Maria Lani Yelik O'Connor was born on 7th November 1996 to Sonna Yelik, an award-winning poet, and Vic O'Connor, a civil engineer. Sonia's father was a first-generation Serbian immigrant who she described as extremely hardworking, while her mother was a housewife who struggled and emotionally and mentally. Lord's dad, Vic O'Connor, praises his father's values and ethics, but says sadly that the admission little boy should be seen and not heard was strictly adhered to in their household. This is why, when it came to eventually having their own kids, of which they had four, they made sure that the kids always knew that they were loved and that the household was a supportive and engaging environment. Lord grew up around Fleetwood Mac albums on rotation and unlimited access to books by authors as varied as Raymond Chandler, Kurt Vonnegut and Sylvia Plath and singing every night by her mother. It was a piece a peaceful middle class upbringing in a peaceful middle class town. When Lord was six, a teacher at Vauxhall Primary took Sonia aside and suggested her six year old daughter was gifted. She didn't want to hear it, but felt obliged anyway to take her to an assessor. A 90 minutes interview, a cognitive abilities test, and the results were in. Her artwork demonstrates not only a high skill level, but a mature perception of the world. By some measures, she had the mental age of a 21 year old. The report also strongly suggested enrolling her at a program for gifted children. Sonia did so reluctantly, but couldn't help the feeling that she was depriving her daughter of a real life upbringing. A few weeks later, Lord was back at Vauxhall Primary. Following in the footsteps of a friend, as well as her mother wanting her to be less introverted, Lord started going to drama classes and would carry on until she was 13. Lord has said how these classes were extremely important in bringing her out of her shell and making her a better public speaker. In school, she was a floater, not particularly attached to any one group, but did hang out with a lot of boys. Lord has said how she found girls particularly weird and even scary, but found it really interesting to observe them, as well as the rest of the teenage population. However, academically, she excelled in every way. Being a crazy perfectionist, she would do her absolute best to hand in perfection with every task and was also aided by her mother in expanding her horizon. Sonia would regularly take Lord to spend afternoons at art galleries and bookshops and encourage her to dive into extracurricular activities. But Lord didn't really need any encouragement to do so as she was already naturally interested in the greater world at hand. She has recalled how, as a young teen, she would read a lot of strange books, watch David Lynch movies and go to the museum all day. Exploration was just her natural natural state of being. Lord's gifts would first manifest themselves outwardly when she started participating in academic competitions. While attending Vauxhall Primary, she placed third and first in 2006 and 2007 respectively in the North Shore Primary School Speech Competition, a national contest. Then in 2009, when she was only 13, Lord and her Belmont team were named the runner-up in the Kids Literature Quiz World Finals, a global literature competition for students aged 10 to 14. She would go on to attend a radio interview afterwards where she proudly announced that she had already read over 1,000 books at the age of 13. However, reading wasn't the only thing Lord was getting up to. Singing has been a big part of her life ever since she was young. In school, she started to take part in bands with her friends, not thinking any more of it than just a fun pastime. And in the same year that she placed runner-up in a global literature competition, she also won her school's talent show alongside her friend Louis McDonald, who she met through a mutual friend. After they met, they really kicked it off as a musical duo and worked really hard so they could start playing covers at cafes around town. Louis's father, Ian, who was eager to further his son's career would email local radio shows and cafes asking if the pair could perform and Louis and Ella, as they were known back then, actually managed to pick up quite a few gigs. At the talent show, Louis and Ella performed Duffy's Warwick Avenue, which was recorded on video by Ian, who, having just read in a New Zealand Herald that a universal music group a and Scott McLachlan had just moved to New Zealand and was looking for new artists, decided to send the tape to Scott. In his eagerness to further his son's career, Ian hadn't asked for Sonia's permission, who was angry when she found that as she would have never had involved her daughter with the music industry at such a young age. Scott watched the video and was interested. He set up a meeting with Ella and Sonia at a cafe where he proposed two different ideas. One is that he could find some producers and songwriters and have her sing their songs. Two, she could do an album of 60s style covers to introduce herself to the public. Ella swiftly said no to both. She wanted to write her own songs. At the time, Scott didn't know about Ella's writing abilities, but was still interested enough to help Ella do what she wanted. First, she signed a development deal with Universal. Then Universal paid for twice a week singing lessons with local coach Francis Dickinson, while Scott searched for an appropriate writing partner. The first few sessions were awful, Lord saying it was incredibly uncomfortable and stressful. However, it had always been a dream of hers to combine her two favourite loves in life, writing and singing, so she was determined to make it work. Ever since she was extremely young, Lord was obsessed with writing short stories as she felt they were the most challenging and interesting form, above poetry and long-form stories. She loved writers such as Raymond Carver and Tobias Wolfe, often reading their stories out loud 
out to figure out what they were doing to make things rise or crash the way they did. With her songwriting, she wanted to combine that talent with her love of melody and drum beats to create the best song she could. One of her first songs was called Dope Ghost, about a girl in her year who took heaps of pills and was a bit of an embarrassment. Another was a six minute track about slipping off a rock and drowning. The sessions took place on weekends and school holidays and weren't very productive for a long time, until the end of 2011. Scott was speaking with another music manager when Ella's name and dilemma came up. The manager suggested she meet with Joel Little, one of his artists. In 2011, Joel was 28, had over a decade in the music industry, having played in a pop punk band in his early 20s, and in the past few years had started producing for upcoming acts from New Zealand. As this was all happening, Lord was exploring new music all the time. She moved from Grizzly Bear to Animal Collective to James Blake. All the while, she remained fascinated by mainstream pop acts like Justin Timberlake or Katy Perry. It was this mix of indie and pop sounds that would be so fundamental to Lord's music later on. Joel was introduced to Lord in December 11th, not long after she turned 15. Their personalities clicked immediately, but the music took a bit longer. During Lord's April school holidays, they had their first successful song, Million Dollar Bills. She spent the next term counting down the weeks until the July holidays. They had four days booked. She wanted to make them count. She walked into the studio with the lyrics to Bravado, Biting Down, and Royals. By the end of the week, all three were largely finished. Scott came to listen to the songs on Thursday and heard Bravado and Royals. Lord recalls, I remember him swearing a lot. He was pretty happy. Over the next few weeks, they worked on the Love Club EP, named after an experience Lord had a year before where she met all these new friends and realized that the group wasn't so good for her and that her old friends and family are the people that she should be with. On November 21st of 2011, two weeks after she had turned 16, Lord released the Love Club EP for free on SoundCloud, thinking it was the best way to create hype and mystery over her work, as well as the fact that she wanted to get her music across to teenagers and most of them don't have credit cards. Within hours, she had 300 fans. She thought, people aren't just listening to this out of courtesy. Immediately following the release of her EP, she was signed with Universal Music subsidiary Lava Records and concert bookers the Windish Agency, even before she had played a live show as Lord. After the Love Club hit 60,000 free downloads, Universal released the EP digitally on 8th March 2013 in New Zealand, Australia, the Netherlands and the United States. Royals was released as a single in the US on the 3rd of June and was sent to alternative radio on the 29th of June, eventually crossing over to pop radio. Royals hit number one on the US Hot 100 in the first week of October 2013, where it would stay for a consecutive nine weeks. The song would go on to win two Grammys and sell over 10 10 million records worldwide, being certified diamond in the US. Lord's debut album, Pure Heroin, would be released on 27th of September 2013 and would go on to sell 3 million albums worldwide. How much did you know of Lord's story? Does this change how you see her now? Let me know in the comment section down below. And before I go, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and like the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.